Hello, I am Connie Ree, and I am a nephrologist from the University of California, Irvine School of Medicine. Hello, I'm Gregory Brandt, and I am an endocrinologist from the David Geffen School of Medicine at the University of California, Los Angeles. On behalf of our co-authors, this is a CJSON podcast that will discuss a study we have published in the journal entitled Thyroid Status, Quality of Life, and Mental Health in Hemodialysis Patients. As background, Epidemiologic data show that patients with advanced chronic kidney disease, including those receiving dialysis, have a substantially higher prevalence of thyroid disease, such as hypothyroidism, compared to patients without chronic kidney disease. Hypothyroidism has pervasive effects on multiple end organs, among which the neuropsychiatric system is a major target and experimental animal models and population-based studies have supported a link between thyroid status and depression. In addition, untreated hypothyroidism has been associated with reduced health-related quality of life. We examined whether thyroid status, defined by serum concentrations of thyroid-stimulating hormone, or TSH, is associated with health-related quality of life and depression in a prospective hemodialysis cohort. We performed a sub-study of the malnutrition, diet, and racial disparities in chronic kidney disease study. In this study, adult hemodialysis patients were recruited from 17 outpatient dialysis clinics in Southern California from 2013 to 2015. Our exposure of interest was thyroid status defined by serum TSH, which was measured every six months. Outcomes of interest were health-related quality of life and depression ascertained using short-form 36 surveys and Beck Depression Inventory 2 questionnaires every six months. We examined the association of baseline and time-updated TSH levels with short Form 36 and Beck Depression Inventory 2 scores using multivariable linear mixed effects models adjusting for case mix and laboratory covariates. Among 450 patients who met eligibility criteria, 35% of patients had baseline data, and the median follow-up time among patients with longitudinal data was 12 months. Higher baseline TSH was associated with worse scores for energy, fatigue, limitations due to physical health, and pain. Higher time-updated TSH was associated with lower physical function scores, lower scores for role limitations due to physical health, and trends towards lower energy and fatigue scores. We did not observe any association of TSH with Beck Depression Inventory 2 scores. As the first study to examine associations between thyroid status and health-related quality of life in dialysis patients, we feel that these findings have important implications. First, routine assessment of quality of life, as well as identification of interventions that can improve the functional status of dialysis patients, have become a major priority of the United States end-stage renal disease program and clinical practice. Thyroid disease may be a potentially modifiable factor for impaired health-related quality of life in this population. Second, this is the first study in dialysis patients to document an association between higher TSH levels and low levels of physical function, a strong predictor of death in these patients. Levothyroxine replacement has been shown to improve strength and cardiopulmonary exercise performance in select patients with hypothyroidism, and future studies are needed to determine whether exogenous thyroid hormone can improve physical function in dialysis patients. In summary, our study found that higher TSH levels were independently associated with impaired health-related quality of life across the domains of physical health, energy fatigue, and pain in a prospective hemodialysis cohort. Given the high prevalence of thyroid dysfunction and low levels of quality of life in dialysis patients, future research is needed to determine whether thyroid hormone replacement can improve the health-related quality of life of this population. Thank you for listening. This podcast is copyrighted by the American Society of Nephrology, all rights reserved. All content in this podcast is for informational purposes only and is not intended to be medical advice. This podcast should not be used in a medical emergency or for the diagnosis or treatment of any medical condition. Please consult your doctor or other qualified health care provider if you have any questions about any medical condition or before taking any drug, changing your diet, or commencing or discontinuing any course of treatment. Thank you for listening to this podcast of the American Society of Nephrology. Thank you.